Hey everyone, welcome to Ellis Mowers. We got five Briggs & Stratton classic engines in front of us here. Um, this is a lot of eight lawnmowers that I got. The other three are right there. That one, he said, probably just needs a little bit of carb clean. Y'all see me do a ton of videos on those. These five push mowers. We're all going to kind of, kind of try and do together. Um... One will be its own separate video. It's that one on the far left. And the other four I can probably get knocked out real quick. Oh, let's go. Number one has rust issues and the deck is done. So are the wheels. The wheels are pretty much done on them too. Um, and I will be taking off this deck. Taking off this engine, which does run, by the way. It does run wide open because somebody turn the governor to run it that way and I'll be putting it on another push mower uh, at a later date got a deck waiting for it in the uh, shed there number two I believe just needs a carb diaphragm number three needs at least a blade this one is good from what I can tell um, I'll probably slap another primer bulb on it because this one's disintegrating. Um, but it runs fine. I just need to tighten up the wheels on the front. I'll show you how to do that in this. Number five, I'm pretty sure needs a carb diaphragm as well because it will start, run for a second, and then cut right back off. Obviously a service and an oil change, or an oil change and a blade sharpening and stuff like that as well. So let's start on number one. Let me get my table out here and we'll just go ahead and start cranking away with number one I will tighten the wheels up and then check the oil check the blade and we will get this one listed number one on the stand here so easy easy squeezy to do these uh, wheels see this one's loose you can see this nut turning or the bolt turning on the nut on the inside you can see that the wheel got loose just over time and use and abuse most likely let's check the blade blade honestly just needs a little bit of an edge on it deck underneath looks okay this one was a made in november 2012 a 9160 9L602 so it's not even a it's a 9 cubic inch so November of 2012 I was just reading the letters there oil situation obviously I have it tilted back but does it even have in it I'm sure it's pretty dark yeah, it's pretty dark. At least it's got oil in it. I think you could run these classic Briggs engines on black oil for eternity and they'll never blow up. So let me show you. I'll pop, pop you on the tripod real quick. What I usually do is get a 3 quarter inch and a 9 16 inch ratcheting. There's a bolt on the back. It's pretty obvious. You'll see it. And then, and obviously on the front here, and just tighten it up. And that'll do it. And there's a there's a shoulder on this bolt, so you're never going to get it tight to the point to where the wheel's going to freeze up, as long as you have the right shoulder bolt on there. So. Just bend the deck in a little bit. And those wheels are good. Let's do the back. Or I'll do the back off camera since we got five to knock off to, to knock out here. That's how you do the do that. Um, I'll go ahead and change the oil, sharpen the blade, clean it up. I'll give you a first look at this one and we'll move on to number two. Alright, y'all, number one is done. Picture is ready to roll. Again, I replaced the primer bulb. This one's a little stiff. It's the only one I had here, though. Uh, we'll move on to number two next. I think it's going to be the one that I just at least need to put the blade on. 
Okay, well, here's mower number two. Like I said, it looks pretty new. Let me give you a little synopsis of it, I guess. Uh, probably um, like a 2008-ish model or so. This won't tell us, but there's all the numbers for this one. The mulching push mower with the bagger option. I do have a bag I can put on the back of this, so that'll be great. That'll help add to the value of it. Oil situation, let's see. It's pretty black. It will definitely need changed. And the dipstick was kind of loose. Air filter also needs doing. It didn't have a blade on it. Don't know if the shaft is bent or if it was just missing. It has gas. And I'll show you. It looks like almost a brand new plug on it. 0901 09 is what the uh, date code is on this. So 2009. Let's see if this 2009 lawnmower will crank. All right, so it's not cranking. Um, I see stuff coming out the side. I think it's got some water in the fuel. Let me get a screwdriver real quick. I'm gonna take the air filter off right there and uh, spray a little bit of carb clean down there and see if we can get it to fire off. If not, I'll put a, take the plug out and we'll clean it. Alrighty, a little carb cleaner. Let's see if we can get this thing to take off. It does have a little bit of vibration to it, but up here at the handle, you really don't feel it unless you actually physically pick the back of the mower up. Thing started right up and ran great again air filter probably it's starting to shrivel up a little bit I thought I would need to replace the air filter on it but I may not have to 
I don't know. So, all that's left is I just got to take that blade back off, sharpen it, change the oil out on it. Um, we'll get this one done. We'll move on to number three. How about that? Alrighty, y'all. Here's mower number two. Let me crank it up for you and let's move on to number three. So that took about a half hour roughly, um, not even. But uh, again, put a blade on it, found this bag for it I had. I don't even remember what it came off of. I think it came off of a mower that was rusted, rusted out. Um, bag's in pretty decent shape. Uh, just got a couple wear marks at the bottom where it's been drug on the ground and such. But the old classic engine, deck's in really good condition, really good. I might throw it up for 100 bucks and see what happens. Um, it's in, like I said, beautiful shape. I'm gonna let it run for a few minutes. We'll move on to mower number three. So two out of five, already done. Alrighty, y'all, mower number three here. I uh, got another bag with it. Um, trying to get the bagger mowers going just for leaf pickup and such, since they will likely sell a little bit better here in the fall or in the off season in general. Um, I'll show you what this one's doing. I think I just need to put a diaphragm in this one and give it a little service. So that's pretty much a classic diaphragm issue. Get it on the bench over there. We'll uh, change out the diaphragm, check the oil and air filter and stuff like that, and see what else we need to do with this one. Alrighty, all the situation really doesn't look too bad on this one either. I don't know if I've got some water in the fuel or something along those lines, but the air filter, although it does look like it has a little bit of, of an old gas or a little bit of it's not soaked with gas, it's got a little bit of gas. Or it's a little wet, either way. I just need to clean those little areas off right there of that oil, and we'll be good on the air filter, so I don't even have to put air filter in this one either. Um, this one's got the external governor linkage set up, I guess you want to call it, instead of the, the two governor springs where the governor comes up right here. The governor's in the rear of this one. That's an 05 model, at least, is what it, the deck and the engine says. Engine cover. But I thought they made they didn't make these an 05 with the way that these governors are. Not 100%. However, uh, we do need to do a diaphragm on this, so really easy to do. 3 8 half inch, slides this off. You just disconnect it from the linkage and take these five screws off right here. One, two, three, four, and five right here in the front. I'll go ahead and do that. Y'all have seen me do it quite a few times. And we'll check the diaphragm situation, put a new diaphragm in it. Alrighty, y'all, so this tank actually was pretty clean. I did clean it. There's a little bit of gunk down there where the, where the tube picks up at the pickup, but it was still picking up fine. Um, I cleaned that out with a little bit of carb clean. This is the old diaphragm. It actually seemed, it may have been a little stretched just from age, but it actually, this is one of the better condition ones I've found. Um, replacing the diaphragm, I have gone through the process of using them cheap Chinese ones before, and I've been burned by them too many times, so I buy um, either OEM ones or stems or rotary to uh, replace them with. So we're just going to pop it on there little rubber piece on the bottom and the gasket on the top just like so just like it came in the package 
I'm just going to throw this back on here. Oops. How that got that way. Here we go. And pop my five screws back on. Just like I did. I'll do this real quick on camera. Why not, right? Do the five screws. We'll pop it back on. Get it off the table. Should prime for us right here, actually. Boom. Y'all stay with me. We'll go ahead and put it on the mower, too. Just hook it onto the linkage, which is sometimes, with, for these, these is a little bit tricky. With the, uh, the rear mounted governor. I checked the tube here. This tube does not appear to be broken. The intake tube and the uh, gasket and the little plastic ring that go inside that kind of marry the tube with the car. Also appear to be in good shape. So and don't forget your carb spring as well here. It back in on the long side first. There we go. Short side goes on the throttle linkage on the front there. It's one of the simplest setups you could have. Half inch. Make sure you don't lose. There's a little spacer washer there. It's pretty long. Um, otherwise, you risk cracking your tank because it doesn't sit right on the mower, on the engine. Put your 3 8 back in right here. Wanted to cross thread there. And my 3 8 Clean the air filter on the bottom, so we're in good shape there now. Ooh, about to do a rookie mistake there. <laughs> I did that in my younger years, putting that air filter on backwards. Now I know better. I got it up here. Let me check the blade. The blade seems relatively sharp. It's pretty smooth. I will put another edge on it. Looks like somebody's done some work under here before. So it looks like somebody's tried to do some work on this lawnmower in general. Nothing to really amount to anything though. So let me get it off. Let's crank it up and see if it'll stay running for us. All right, y'all. Check the oil in it. Oil looks like it had has very recently been changed as well. 
or has, doesn't have a lot of hours on it. I'm beginning to think this was an abandoned project for whatever reason, and uh, they just didn't put a new diaphragm in it. I don't know. We're going to find out here in just a second, though. It's looking good. I knew it, it looked like I had a little bit of water in the tank too, so um, I knew that that might have been a potential, but it looks like the diaphragm is what the issue was. So I'm going to let it run a little bit. Um, I will grab the bagger for it and I will show you that the bagger fits and uh, we'll have mower number three out of the, well, three out of the four I'm going to do on this video. We're going to do the last one back there. It's right there. So we'll go ahead and uh, show you the finished product of this after I test it and take pictures of it and all that good stuff. And then we'll move on to that final push mower back there. All right, that leaves us with, leaves us with number four. Let me show you a last look of number three with the bag on it real quick. Um, looked at the blade a little bit more and determined that the edge is sharp enough. I don't really need to worry about sharpening it. So got the bag on. It's not quite in as good a shape as number two. So I'll list it for 90 bucks. see if anybody will want to get it, pick up their leaves and whatnot with before it really turns cold around here. So mower number four is what we would call the $50 special, and I'll show you why. Keep taking on and off the tripod, I apologize. So looks like somebody put a new muffler on it, or the muffler hasn't seen any rust, one of the two. But you can see we got some rust spots in the back. Rust spot in the front here. Um, deck's in decent shape overall, but it's missing the little flap here on the back. So, and this side discharge chute is a little broken, although it's still functional. Um, these mowers never bring more than about 50 or $60. And to me, it's not worth trying to find a little thing to put on the back as you can see the deck's pretty rusted on the bottom however on the top it's it's uh got no holes so just got to put uh a little just a small amount of work into this uh issue with it right now is it's not even priming as you can hear so the diaphragm's probably out on this one as well this is, uh, I think, an early 2000s model. I did put some fresh gas in there, so that should work for us. Um, yeah, like I said, or an early 2000s model, probably, probably like an 03 or 04, maybe. Well, no, it's got the 500 series, so it may be like an 07 or so. I don't remember. Let's see what we find here. Yep, 07, 08. One zero, so August tenth of oh seven for this one. So we got what the oh five, oh seven, or oh nine, and oh seven. 
and the other one I think was like a, an 11 or a 12, can't remember. Um, so, probably going to be deja vu with this one as we just deal with the Craftsman. Um, one thing very quickly though, I'm going to grab a screwdriver, take off the air filter, throw some carb cleaner in and see if we can at least get it to kick over. I will check the oil in it as well. I'll do it right. I'll do that right now actually, if, as long as I can get the dipstick off, which miraculously I have been able to get the dipstick off of all of these, believe it or not. Oh man, that's, that's, that's pretty bad. <laughs> I'm sure it runs fine still, it's a Briggs classic engine. But that's some rough looking stuff. Um, I'm going to grab a screwdriver, spray some, some carb clean out and see if we can at least get it to kick over before we put a diaphragm in it. Alright, let's do this. Um, screw was a little difficult to take off actually because I think it's been so dry up in that carb throat for a while. That's all I needed to know there. Let's go ahead and put a diaphragm on it. Y'all just saw it, me do it on the gray craftsman, so I ain't even gonna worry about showing you on this one. I will put the diaphragm on it. I might show you how bad it looks, and then we'll uh, get this thing running again. Alrighty, y'all, as promised, let me show you the situation when it comes to the carb and the gas tank. I don't know if you can see very well down there. You see like gunk and some of the corrosion right there on the top of where the, where the diaphragm sits. Um, probably just a little bit of water got down in there and did its thing. I've, and also right here on the uh, little fuel screen as well. So easy fixes here, a little bit of carb cleaner. Um, I have seen them before where they have actually corroded so bad that they have worn holes in the top of the tank so I'm glad that this is not the case for this mower this mower should be saved pretty easily I'm going to go ahead and do some carb clean on that put the new diaphragm on and uh, put this back on get this thing listed for 50 bucks <laughs> make my $50 somebody mentioned be right before I do this somebody mentioned that the mowers that I, these lot of eight that I bought were not a good buy for whatever reason. So, let me do the math for you really quickly since I've got four of them here that I'm working on and fixing in this video. So, I bought them for 200. I bought eight of them. Two of them have rusted out decks. They're sitting right here. Number one and number two. Okay? All right. The middle one there is off from another lot, which I bought for $70. I've got this one listed for 90 so I'll probably sell it for 80 and I'll get my money back on that. I've still got six more. So I sell the red one for 50. This one for, I list it for 90. I sell it for 80. whoop de doo right? So that's up to 130. If I sell this one for 80, I'm already over $200, even with the $3 worth of parts and the, the not really far drive time I had to go get these. So There's uh, another 50 or $60. So we're already $50 in the good, and I still have two more that should be relatively easy fixes. That's probably another 75 So we're about 120 in the good now, 130 And then if I get that one going and everything's good, that's another $150. Don't account the trades. I've already $300 in the good, and then if I put another engine, 
or I put this engine on a deck that I got in there, that's another $50. Again, if I find another deck for an engine, you can say that's probably another 50 to 100 some odd, depending on what I can find to put that engine on. So I make about, at bare minimum, $300 off the lot. And as you can see, I've done one, two, three, four of them. If I didn't film, I'd probably have all four of them done in about an hour and a half to two hours tops after cleaning them all. So again, just giving you a little bit of the math of what I do whenever I'm looking at lots of lawnmowers, fixing them, and reselling them. I keep track of it. I know how much I'm making off of each lot. So I know I was going to be making some money off of these. Anyways, I just wanted to clarify that. Um, just for anybody who is curious about the money side of these, since I am working on half the lot in this video. Let me go ahead and fix this diaphragm. I'll be right back with you. All right, so we do still need to change the oil in it and sharpen the blade. But let's see if it runs now with the new diaphragm in it. So to me it sounds like we've got some sort of probably water in the fuel or something along those lines um, just by what it's doing. So um, let me investigate a little bit further and see if I can get it to stay running or not. I do see a little bit of oil dripping down off of from the top. But maybe it's coming. Maybe just be condensation. I think it's actually just condensation or some water or something um so i might have a cracked intake tube i'm not 100 percent sure i'm gonna keep troubleshooting this see if i can get this thing to run put a little bit put a little bit of fresh gas in it and see if i can get it to run like i said um that'd be quite as easy sometimes these little 50 dollar mowers are a little temperamental so i'm pretty sure this one hasn't been running a long time i did get it to fire and stay running i'm gonna see if it'll do it on camera now terribly long on that old old oil um so you can see the it's got a bunch of oil in the muffler anyways and it's smoking um so let me let the muffler cool off a little bit change out the oil in it sharpen the blade and uh give you all a final look and just kind of a synopsis of what we've done here Alrighty, else, so we have put new oil in it. Um, put a little bit of sea foam in the crankcase because that oil, like y'all saw earlier, was black and tar like. It was very thick when it came out of the uh, crankcase under the um, drain pan over there. 
So put a little bit of sea foam in there. Hopefully it'll free it up a little bit. We're going to give it a crank. I'm just going to let it run a little while. And then we'll just kind of do a synopsis of everything that we've done here. Don't think the spark plugs all the way in. That might be where my oil is leaking out of. Plug leads a little corroded too. It seems to be running fine otherwise, so. sound like it's struggling <laughs> like it was when it had the tar oil in there on the four mowers are all running good that last one I think it still had a little bit of water to purge out of the system um, but it seems to be running fine now which is good the other three again very easy fixes well, the one on the left here was a blade out of the bag the second one is uh, replace the primer bulb on it third one I replaced the diaphragm and the craftsman over there I added a well the bag came with it excuse me I just had to put a diaphragm on it so again these Briggs classic engines just uh, a testament to easy repair and maintenance as that sentiment is shared by a, bu a bunch of us here in the mower community so a couple hours of work got four push mowers ready for sale ready to go on to new homes I'll catch y'all in the next video. I hope y'all enjoyed this forfer. We'll have number five come whenever I decide to put it on another deck. But um, until next time, I'll catch you right here on YouTube, Wednesdays and Sundays, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. As long as I can continue to crank out the number of videos I have every week. And I'll be on Instagram at LSMowers09 and uh, Facebook as well. 
catch y'all next time.